Today we will build a simple but essential device, an RF current meter. It is needed in every radio shack or lab. Who does not want to know where the energy flows? And we will profit from an old Soviet secret. Hello wireless enthusiasts. Here is the channel with the strange Swiss distortion in the signal with a new video around wireless and other exciting stuff. Make sure you subscribe if you do not want to miss the following emissions. The correct way of radio waves is from the transmitter via the antenna into the air. But unfortunately, it often finds other ways which can drive us crazy. For example, it can be reflected inside the coax, create a lousy SWR and heats our transmitter. Or it chooses to come back on the outside of the coax as a common mode current that interferes with other devices. Or even worse, it decides for a completely different direction and chooses to creep along the wiring of the loudspeakers, the Morse key or worst, the PC. To correct a bad SWR, a VNA together with proper tuning help. For other cases, our cheap meter gives us reasonable indications and ferrite cores do the rest. Linus from the LY2H Ham Radio One YouTube channel recently showed how he built a small device like this. It works similar to such a clamp ampere meter. If we insert one wire in the device, it measures the DC current. However, inserting both wires does not show a current because of the inverse direction of the currents in both wires. We do the same with our new meter and insert whatever cable or wire into the ferrite clamp. Hit the transmit button and watch if the meter moves. This knob helps to adjust the sensitivity. If the needle does not move on the highest sensitivity, everything should be okay and the forward and back currents are in sync. If it moves too much, we can call Houston because we have a problem. Here is my coax to the end fed antenna on the roof. The meter says, not good. Because it is winter, I will not solve the real issue close to the antenna because it's cold outside. Still, I can show you the effect of a few spare ferrite cores clamped on the cable. Now the reading is much smaller. Mission accomplished. The same with my beloved Begali key. Without the ferrite, the meter shows a lot of current. And with a ferrite, this times to save ferrite material with a few turns through a toroid, my Begali is clean. Cool. Unfortunately, my CW speed dropped by 30% without this additional energy from the cable. But how is this helpful device built? Linus, as his call sign says, lives in Lithuania. As he writes on his QRC page, he speaks Russian and therefore was able to find this old diagram. It also contains Russian diodes, but fortunately they can be replaced by standard Chinese Schottky diodes. It starts on the left with a transformer. The primary winding is whatever wire we insert into the toroid. The second winding consists of 10 windings of thin enameled wire. I use 0.4 mm. Then comes a Schottky diode. In my case, I used a BAT85 and, according to the drawing of Linus, a 0.01 micro or 10 nanofarad capacitor. You could also use a germanium diode like a 1N34A. But pay attention, not one from a shady Chinese store, because they often sell Schottky diodes instead. Now we have a DC voltage that can be reduced by a 10K potentiometer and fed into a microampere meter. I use a 100 microampere version. Why? The inner resistance of the meters is 1.5 kilo ohm. So the voltage drop of the 100 microampere version at full scale is 0.15 volts and for the 200 microampere version 0.3 volts. For simplicity, I also use a BAT85 protection diode here. 
According to the datasheet, it has a forward voltage of 0.25 to the 0.3 volts, confirmed by the multimeter. So the 200 microampere meter would not reach full scale before the diode would start to bypass the current. The 100 microampere version offers a full swing and will be stressed a little at the upper end of the scale. Because we always watch the meter during measurements, we can quickly reduce the potentiometer if this happens. These meters are forgiving in this respect. That is all. Now we need a case for the whole thing. Viewers of my main channel know that I'm in the pink phase till the old PLA reel is finished. With this color, for sure, I will never need to search for my newly built meter. The case has three holes in the front and on the top two openings for a zip tie and two holes for the wires of the coil. There is an opening for the potentiometer on the left and a lid covers the back. For speed of construction, the case is based on my parametric box design featured in video number 258 of my main channel. I use a split ferrite for the transformer because it is much easier. A modern invention that was probably not common in Soviet times. I use a pretty big one to be sure all cables fit. You can use a smaller one. As usual, I leave the links to the used products in the video description. The few parts are soldered to the potentiometer or across the meter using my beloved naked terminals. And I choose a tight fit for these holes and did not add the nuts inside the small case. By the way, I print the holes a little too small and use this reamer to generate the exact fit. That's all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. 73 to everybody. And please consider supporting the channel by using the links in the description. See you in the next episode.